I'm Charlie James. Welcome back to the New York Boat Show. Um, as technology advances, so does the technology for boats. And today we're going to be showing you three new developments that are helping make boating safer, easier, and more fun for everyone. Uh, to start things off with us here, we have Tom Milanetti. He is from FLIR Systems. And you're going to show us something that started out actually as a military technology, That's right. but is now being used um, for boaters. That's right. Yeah, FLIR Systems been around for a while. It's not a new company. Uh, we've been making thermal sensors uh, for the military and for other applications for, for many years. Matter of fact, the genesis of the name, FLIR, is a military acronym for forward-looking infrared. Um, we are now a much, it's much more than just government and military applications. As the technology, just like GPS, has commercialized over the years, there's so many applications for thermal, uh, for thermal technology, for infrared sensors, uh, that outside of the, the marine industry. But my group, my team here, and our line of business is in the maritime uh, world because there's such a great application for, for thermal technology for boaters. So tell us what, we, what we're looking at here. Well, this is one example of one of our cameras. This is a, what's called an M625L. Uh, it's a thermal sensor that sees in the long wave infrared uh, spectrum. Um, and it clear, you know, the utility of it for a boater is to be able to see at night, to see things that when there's com in, in complete darkness, uh, it doesn't require any light at all. And you know, I, I often will show people at a you know people say at the sh at a boat show like this. Well, why is it that I'm, you know, we're in a bright light here and we're in a, you know in the convention center. Um, so it, how is that not affecting it? Well, it's not seeing that. That's what our eyes see. That's visible light. So to demonstrate, I sometimes just use a bag, and I throw the bag over the camera, and you'll notice when when I do this you don't notice any difference in the camera because uh, that infrared uh, radiation is actually going through the plastic and, and into the camera is sensing it as well. So um, certainly if I did that with a visible camera, you would see the bag. Right, right. that's a great vis visualization because you do think when you look at a camera like this that it would be based right. off of sight, but it's not. And I'm going to stand in front of the camera here so you can see. And so me as a person, I'm showing up really bright. That's right. Uh, Every, you know, so, it, you know, when we talk about a thermal camera, I mean, heat, obviously, when something's warmer, it is radiating, it is radiating infrared a little, you know, differently, uh, and the camera is going to see that heat. It's a, really a, a temperature difference. So a person is very bright, and that's actually a, one of a utility of this camera. We sell a lot to first responders in the maritime market because of it's such a good tool to use for search and rescue. If somebody's in the water, whether it's in the daytime or at nighttime, uh, they're very bright. There's a very good contrast. They see Typically, a, a thermal camera, as you see in this image, is depicted uh, in what we call white hot, where warmer objects are lighter in color and cooler objects are darker in color. But we can change that. We can flip flop it so black we call black hot, you know, where there's uh, darker is is indicating things that are warmer and, and uh, lighter colors is uh, is is uh, cooler. But we can add color to it. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have seen a thermal presentation as I'm flipping through some of the color palettes here. Um, so seeing, and we're really close, I mean, being inside kind of its focal point here, it, it's a little clearer as we get further back. Um, but, you know, one of the things about it is these very small differences in temperature, and I don't know if we can demonstrate this as well, because people ask me, well, what do you, you know, when we talk about what can you see, why could I see a buoy in the water or a navigation aid in the water that's sitting out there all the time, isn't it going to be the same temperature as the water? And it never really is. Material, the different objects uh, have different uh, characteristics, the way they absorb and transmit uh, thermal energy. Uh, and to demonstrate, you know, I can step back here. With, and, they, and these cameras see very, very small differences in temperature. So I'm going to just put my hand on this. If you want to show on that screen there, uh, as I put my hand, you see it's uniform temperature. If I just put my hand on this brochure for a second and I pull it away, my handprint now is all the way through the brochure. So wow, that's great. Very so small differences in temperature. So a log in the water is absorbing infrared radiation from the sun during the day as it sits on the surface of the water, and at night it's radiating differently. So it's apparent to uh, to a boater to see things like, like I said, other boats, navigation aids, chart, you know, um, uh, 
mooring buoys or whatever they're right. whatever they're looking to 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 uh, to avoid. Right. So we're seeing a lot of this built into boats now. Some of the big yachts that we looked at earlier, we saw this. Uh, this one here would go on top of your boat, and uh, many different uses for for this sort of night vision. That's right. uh, if you want to put it it's that just way. It's an analog video, so it you know a video out, so it plugs right into any monitor that's on the boat that has a video input. In this case, we've got just an off-the-shelf you know TV. But uh, that's our fixed cameras, and we have handheld cameras as well with the same technology. Uh, you know, obviously, there's people that have a boat, and they may up in New York or whatever, and they put it away. They uh, they may want to use this outside of their boat. Um, Great. Well, thank you so much for showing us those those different uh, usages and the different models. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on next to a new water sport that has been created and a whole new uh, league of boats that has been created uh, around it. I want to introduce you now. Hi, Ryan. This is Ryan Cordella from uh, East Coast Flight Craft. Um, so let's start with just explaining what wake surfing is, because for a lot of people, they might not be familiar with this new sport at all. Of course, so wake surfing is a derivative of actual surfing, except you know, the wake's being created or the wave is being created by the boat. Uh, what we're doing is we have a little bit shorter or modified surfboard. It's about five feet tall, roughly, and you're actually gonna have a boat that has ballast tanks, a wedge, and a surf gate create a three and a half, four foot curl. And this will actually have the skier push off that with no rope. So these boats are specifically made for water sports, uh, not just for um, the wave surfing, but also you can do uh, regular water skiing um, and other water sports like that. So tell us a little bit about, if we look underneath the boat, what is the technology uh, that's and the machinery that's creating these waves? Well, the 25 LSV, the boat we're looking at right now, is equipped with your surf gate too which is that reverse hydrofoil at the rear of the boat. Okay. And what that does is it's the equivalent of adding 2,000 pounds of pressure, downward force, instantaneously. Now that actually sinks the boat three to four more inches, and then we have surf gate on each side. And what the surf gate is are these gates from the port and starboard side that will actually come out at a 45 degree angle, diverge the wake, and give you that curl that you need to actually push for surfing. So by lowering the boat like that, you are in a way um, creating the same uh, the same wave and depth that a really heavy yacht would, correct? Exactly. That's okay. exactly correct. And then on those sides, the flaps here, yeah. <laughs> or if I'm going to put it in layman's terms, <laughs> the flaps here, um, they are creating that that wake that goes around and propels the that surfer. Right. That's right. That's called the push is what you want to go off of. And if you have the push, it gives you almost a little bit of a curl and will actually force the skier or surfer at the same speed as the boat. You're usually doing about 9 to 11 miles an hour, depending on the size or expertise of the person. So what I find so amazing about this sport is that, and I couldn't believe it when I first saw it, is that you don't have to be holding on, that you are actually using the waves created by these boats um, to surf the, the wakes without holding on to the boat at all. And uh, I wanted you to show us this new wristband that connects with the boat and actually allows um, people to change the speed and the wake without being on the boat at all. That's correct. Well, what happens is a lot of people are a little bit pickier or want to change the wake for their progression of expertise. Uh, instead of obviously yelling back and forth to the uh, skier, to the driver, the skier can control it by themselves. Of course, it's done wirelessly. Um, it is waterproof. And you can use this whether you're surfing or whether you're uh, wakeboarding, which are about 20 or 34 more feet behind the boat. So can you push some of the buttons and show us what happens? Of course. What I'm going to do is I'll go from port to starboard side. So this is if I want to switch from one side to the other. You can have three beeps in the flash and light. That gives the uh, ability for the skier to time his transition from one side to the other as well as I can adjust my wedge, which is at the bottom, which is now adjusting the entire boat's pitch, which is giving me a higher, taller wake or a longer, skinnier wake, depending on what I want to ski on. So let's talk a little bit, we've seen the technology, let's just talk a little bit more about wake surfing and um, how, is it is it easy to learn? Uh, could everyone do it? Um, and are you seeing a lot of people coming and asking about these boats? Wake surfing, it's still fairly new in the industry, but it's taken off like wildfire. Um, it's so, so simple to get up, low impact. We have ages from 5 to 105 getting up now. Uh, consumers that never thought they'd ever want to go out and water ski, or even try for disabilities, knee injuries, whatever it will be, can get up first, second try. It's, it's growing 
exponentially across the market and it's now a demand. Before, it was a great option to have, now it's a norm. I, I never wanted to get out of my boat, it does everything I want, but now I need a surfboat. My kids need a surfboat. And it's absolutely grown and it's a great test for everybody to get out and play. Well, if you get the option, you should go and try it out. Ryan, thanks so much for telling no us problem. about this new sport. Um, so we have one last new technology uh, to tell you about, and it's on the other side of the boat show. And to walk with us, we have Tom Danrich here. Um, he is the president of the group that puts on uh, this show, uh, the National Marine Merchants Association. And he's going to walk with us and tell us a little bit more just about the trends overall in the boat show uh, while we head over to the other side to show you this last technology. So, Tom, as we walk down and take a look at all of these beautiful boats here, um, tell us a little bit about what's hot this year. Like, what are people coming down here and asking about? You know, over the past two or three years, the really hot segments have included pontoon boats, which is a very versatile boat that you can use for water sports, you can use for cruising or entertaining and relaxing, uh, saltwater fishing. And this uh, New York is a very big saltwater fishing market. So you'll see it to show a lot of saltwater fishing boats. Uh, <clears throat> they're getting both bigger and more powerful so you can get out to the fish faster. But manufacturers are also introducing uh, more entry level models to uh, for more affordable for that first time uh, boat buyer. And we should mention that uh, the New York Boat Show is the biggest and the first um, of the season, but there will be shows like this all over the country, correct? Yeah, actually, the New York Boat Show is the oldest boat show in the world. 111 was, year. Uh, 111, That's 111th year. Yeah, 111th, 112th year. It's the oldest boat show in the world. It is the first boat show of the year. But as you said, there will be all over the country uh, over the next two or three months uh, boat shows in two or three hundred places. Uh, in cities uh, all over the country. So uh, boat shows are really the best opportunity to see everything that's available in the marketplace, to see everything that's new, to compare products and make the best choice for the boat that's right for you. So say I'm a viewer at home, I've never been to a boat show, I um, am interested in coming down. What, uh, what are like the basics that I would need to know uh, coming down here? What, what to look for if I'm trying to pick my perfect boat? So I'll tell you, we as uh, industry sponsor a, uh, uh, an in a promotional program called Discover Boating. And at discoverboating.com, we have a, a, a number of tools to help people figure out what type of boat is right for them. So we don't promote any particular brand, but there's a boat selector tool where you can answer a few questions. You know, are you going to use it on a river or a lake in an ocean? How many people do you want to take out? What do you want to do with the boat? You want to we'll do water sports, you want to do fishing, and, and it will narrow down the range of boats to the type of boat that best meets your needs. And so once you've figured out that, you know, what I really need is a saltwater fishing boat or a pontoon boat or a ski boat or a wakeboard boat, uh, then you come to the show and you've got almost every manufacturer of all those different styles of boats here to talk to uh, and, and to learn more about that type of boating. And it's really nice to be able to see all the boats next to each other. So instead of hopping around all over the place, you can see them all together. Tom, thank you so much for walking with us and giving us more information on the show. Um, it is running through Sunday, so you still have, if you're in the New York area, um, today and three more days. Uh, thank you thank again you, so much. We have one more new technology to show you. Um, and to help us out here, we have John Pfeiffer. He is the president of Mercury Marine. Thank you so much yeah, for speaking with us. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. So we are on board another boat here today. Uh, and we want to show you a technology that is helping make boating much easier, correct? Right. So correct. let's walk over okay. to the console here. So this is a Boston Whaler 320 Vantage. It's got twin 350 horsepower Mercury Verado engines on the back, just to tell you what we're on. Uh, today's boating is completely different from the way it has been in the past in that we're making everything simple. We're taking things and we want it to make, to make it so simple that a 12-year-old can drive a boat like this. Not by themselves, of course, for those no, of you. Well, with, with, you know, with an adult on board, but you know, you want to make it so simple that you're taking all the hassle out of operating a boat. So I'll show you a few features of what modern boating is all about. Okay, great. So we've built joysticks into boats today. So the joystick allows you to move the boat in a marina or at slow speeds in any direction that you want to move it in. So you can move it sideways, you can move it diagonally, you can move it in whatever direction you want the boat to go in. 
a lot of people are used to seeing joysticks if you've played video games ever Correct. or something like that. Just for context, yeah. let's show what the, because this still has what would be considered the older system. Yeah, well, when, when you're cruising at speed, it's more intuitive to put the throttles forward and you'll get up on plane and you'll use it, you'll use the steering wheel just like you were driving a car. But when you're at close, uh, uh, slow speed in a marina, there's other boats around you, you're going into a dock, you're going into a fuel dock, you're going to a restaurant, you want to have the ability to move the boat in any direction in close quarters uh, that you want to move it. That's what this allows you to do. It takes all the stress out of it. And it could also make it easier, I imagine, for older boaters. Maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fairly experienced boater, and every time I go out on my boat, I use the joystick. Are these coming standard now? I mean, we've seen earlier we were aboard a few uh, large yachts here, and it seemed like all of them had the joysticks built yeah. in. Yeah, so the what's happening is the higher-end boats, it's becoming more the norm to have uh, technology like joystick. And what you'll see, it's probably a little bit similar to the automotive industry. As we go forward, the technology will migrate into smaller and smaller boats. Well, thank you so much yeah. for telling us about this new technology. So you've seen now technology that makes boating uh, easier, um, safer, uh, and also some new ways to use your boat to have fun in outdoor sports. I'm going to take this opportunity to sit in the captain's yeah, seat <laughs> as we head out. Thanks for joining us uh, at abcnews.com, um, live from the New York Boat Show. Uh, and as I said, it, the boat show is running through Sunday, so you can come down here. And if you liked anything that you saw today uh, on these live streams, you can come down here and see it for yourself um, and learn some more about the boat. So uh, I'm going to sail off into the sunset now. Thank you guys for, for uh, joining us. And there's a lot more on ABC Digital coming up.